Hi everyone, I'm Rosemarie Miller here with the president of the Las Vegas Raiders, Sandra Douglas Morgan. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Rosemarie. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sandra, I, I scoped through your history and I realized you, you are the first in a lot of things. Right now, you're the first black woman president in the NFL. Is that a coincidence or is that intentional? You know, I, I think a, a little bit of it is the fact that I'm from Nevada and I'm, I've been raised in Nevada. Mm -hmm. So I was the first black city attorney for the state and the first black um, chair of the Gaming Control Board, which is what I did before I joined the Raiders. Mm -hmm. And you know, I. Even though that's it's an accomplishment, I think um, you know my focus is making sure that I'm not the last in any of those positions, and I'm really proud to say that I'm not the only uh, black attorney. Now we had a, a city of Las Vegas attorney that just retired, who's African American male. There's a um, a woman of color who's a current city attorney, and we also had people of color now that are on the gaming control board. And so you know the goal is that I will not be the last black woman to to lead an NFL team. So how have you navigated the challenges of being the first so many times? You know, I try to focus on the job at hand and not really focus. On on being the first. I do know that with that comes greater responsibility. I, I feel a responsibility to make sure that I'm also uplifting and encouraging others to understand more about sports or gaming when I was involved in gaming. Um, you know, and just make sure that I'm taking this moment in time and this responsibility in this platform to be sure that we're being as inclusive as possible and just giving more opportunities to other people. Well, while you don't focus on it, I'm sure you've encountered some stuff. Of course. Can you give us an example <laughs> of what you've encountered and how you overcame yeah. it? You know, I don't think there's been one position that I've had, especially in, in a leadership role, where I've heard someone say that they don't want to work for me, um, you know, from one person or either, either directly. And I, you know, you can't focus on that. I just, you know, will let my work speak for itself, let my leadership skills and my, my ability to speak for myself but those are things that I don't think other leaders have to have to focus on or you know every decision kind of being critiqued and assuming that you got the role because of what you look like not realizing that we usually had to work twice if not three times as hard to get there yeah. mm -hmm. so could you give us an example of how you negotiate your salary Oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> you know, I would just make sure that you know your self worth. Don't sell yourself short. Um, you know, be direct and confident in your abilities, and I think that'll help you negotiate uh, the best agreement for yourself. Yeah. Sandra, mm -hmm. that's really vague. Yeah. We need help out here negotiating <laughs> these salaries. I think you should do your do your homework, do your due diligence, um, find some comparables. Mm -hmm. um, you know, actually add some deliverables that you can bring and make and certain benchmarks that you can bring to make sure that if you hit those, you know, maybe you can have some um, whether it be increases or bonuses kind of built in. Yeah. But you know, just I would say know the landscape. It depends on the position, obviously that you're uh, that you're working for as well. But do your homework, do your due diligence, um, get to know who you're negotiating with. Mm -hmm. And you know, make sure that you know what your hard stops are going to be before you sit down at the table. Okay, so let's pivot okay. a little bit to you. Okay. Tell us a typical day in your life at work and maybe on the weekend. Like, what does Sandra do to oh, feel goodness. good and relax? Um, I have two children and I have um, a husband and so they're 13 and 16 so usually it's kind of juggling to whatever their special events are. I call myself a glorified um, you know TNC driver uh, but um, you know, my husband and I love movies so we do love game night um, and uh, that's kind of typically what I do to relax but you know during the season mm -hmm. we know on Sundays we are, we're going to be at the stadium we're going to be focusing on football and watching the game and so that's what we definitely do on Sundays and a typical day at work there's no such thing as a typical day at work. Work. Uh, you know, there's always something exciting and fresh and new that's going on, whether it be with the team or whether it be at the stadium. Yeah. And, you know, we just want to make sure we're doing right by Raider Nation and our fans and making sure that anyone who comes to the stadium will leave a Raider fan. So what advice do you have for young women who want to be like you? I would, um, self-doubt can truly be your worst enemy. There's enough obstacles that we have externally that we cannot control and you should really focus on those. Focus on what you can do, the control and the power that you have. Again, being prepared and uh, focus on what you can do to execute to make sure you can end up at your end goal. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining me Thank today. You.